In today's video, I'm taking the prototype for the Binary Maniac out for a spin. Hi, I'm Tess and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I hope you guys will enjoy this video and if you do, don't forget to give it a like. So, this is the Binary Maniac. This is a titanium hardtail and this is actually a prototype. My husband Steve has a YouTube channel and it's called Hardtail Party. As you can imagine, his content focuses around hardtails and he's probably ridden more modern hardtails than anyone. And so he's had a lot of time to think about what his ideal bike would be like. And so Binary gave him the opportunity to create a signature frame. So some of the things that make this bike unique is that it's got modern, pretty aggressive geometry. It's got like a 65 degree head tube angle, but it also takes 29 plus wheel and tire size. This isn't the kind of bike that you typically see spec with this wheel size. It's also based around a 130 millimeter travel fork. So not massive. It can take up to 150, but it's kind of designed in that lower travel fun zone. We'll talk more about this bike as we go, but let's get on the trail. There is something elegant and simple about a titanium frame. No paint job, no worrying about scratches. One of the things that Steve cared a lot about creating the spike was that it would ride gentle and not be a super rigid frame. And then when you pair that with 29 plus tires, I mean, you're getting a pretty cushy ride. Gotta stop and enjoy the view a little bit from the top of teacup. I'm guessing this is a size medium, just knowing Steve. And it doesn't feel insanely long. Steve likes some long bikes. He's got a long torso. I'm surprised this doesn't feel horribly long. I don't hit massive drops, but even just coming down off of just little 12 inch ones and I'm always amazed how much sting the plus tires help take out. I also think part of it is probably the frame as well. All right, this will be a moment of truth climb. <clears throat> kind of gingerly about it, but not yet. I'm surprising myself how well I can climb on this bike. Oh, oh so close. I've been trying to practice my wheel lifts more lately on climbs and there was a couple times where I took a little bit trickier line on the climb and forced myself to do a small wheel lift and I was amazed how easy it was to do on this hardtail. I'm used to mostly riding my full suspension bikes and uh, a little bit of my cross country hardtail but I was like wow I am rocking this. I think a lot of it is to do with the, the 29 plus tires because just a little bit of rider input to shift your weight on the bike and then the tires just kind of wheel up the rest is pretty awesome. I thought this might be a cool moment to take a quick look at some of the spec that Steve has on this bike because I just think he does a really interesting and creative job sometimes with his specs. So these are Paul Clamper brakes. These are cable actuated disc brakes. They are very, very powerful. I can definitely point you to more of Steve's videos if you're interested in learning more about these, but I know he loves them and puts them on a lot of his bikes. They're very powerful. They're not cheap. This is a boutique item. Um, hydraulic brakes are gonna be cheaper, but these are wicked simple to maintain, which is pretty awesome. I wanted to point out the drivetrain here as well. This is the MicroShift Advent X. And this is a 10 speed drivetrain that has about the range that you get out of the 12 speed drivetrains that most of us ride from companies like SRAM and Shimano. I've ridden this drivetrain on a few of Steve bikes and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. The price point is also really, really impressive. Like it's a fraction of the cost. I wanna say it's like close to 200 bucks. And it is also gonna weigh quite a bit less than most of the 12 speed drivetrains and at a fraction of the price. 
you can see that this has a place to mount a bike packing rack you'd have to do something custom but it's cool that it's something that's been thought of there's also a lot of other kind of bolts and things for bolting different bike packing bags on it's got a water bottle cage here and the final version is gonna be able to take a water bottle cage there as well now when it comes to 29 plus i pedaled a couple bikes that have it and i definitely see the advantages and the ride characteristics of it but something that i have to think about is you know the potential weight penalty of that as a small petite female rider that can be really significant an extra pound sometimes more to your build that is hugely significant so when i first saw this bike all put together and saw the wheels on it i was like oh my heavens those wheels are massive but steve knew what he was doing when he chose these wheels to go on his bike because these envy carbon wheels Despite how big they are, they are so light and sleek feeling. And I was just pedaling it around the parking lot the other day. And I was like, man, I can just like get cruising and pick, pick up some momentum really quick. And that's the thing that usually feels draggy for me when I try 29 plus bikes. So I think if you are a smaller, lighter rider and you're thinking of going 29 plus, it could be worth considering you know, investing some of your bike budget in high quality lightweight wheels because that could make a world of difference. But let me tell you, like 29 plus is super duper fun. Definitely more fun when it's not adding a ton of bike weight though. I think we've had enough chit chat, let's ride again. Man, the brakes on this bike are powerful. I have a tendency to sometimes use a little too much back brake, not enough front brake. And then it kind of accentuates that which is good for me, it's making me more aware that, yeah, these brakes are powerful. This bike definitely rides better with some weight on the front end, but the body position on this bike kind of comes alive when you get forward. I don't know, it's either that or maybe it's just letting the back end of the bike dance a little bit more. We, It does not take a lot of work to get over the front end on this bike, though. I, I am really curious to see how long this thing is. Be a little less back brake. These brakes are crazy powerful. Hmm, what now? Maybe some Grand Central? I can definitely see how, if you're gonna be a one bike person on a hardtail, something like this would be such a great one. And that wheel size doth rock exceedingly. I have to say, what I thought was going to be kind of an awkward behemoth is quite an elegant bike. And it's amazing what a difference, you know, being on more of like a cross country style hardtail versus this, when you're doing a more technical climb, it just positions your whole body and the forces of your weight into the climb so much better. There's no doubt if I was racing cross country and, you know, maybe only had a few techie spots on the climb. An XC bike makes sense, but the most of the stuff are right out here, man. If I'm going hardtail, this would definitely be a better way to go. It's my first time being out riding in about a week. Fun to be out and cool to try a new bike while I'm out here. This bike is fairly playful. It'd be cool if the chain stays were even a little bit shorter, um, just with the, the bigger tires, making it a little easier to mess around with. Um, and it has sliding dropouts, which is really awesome. So you could pull this chain stay a little bit shorter right now with the uh, 29 plus wheels. It's about as far forward as you can have it without having that rub, but uh, they are gonna make some changes to the design so that um, even those running the bigger wheels and tires will have more options with where they position a sliding dropout um, and adjusting the chain stay length, which is cool. I am the only person other than Steve who's ridden this bike, which is kind of cool and exciting. Um, so I know that I realized that my, my thoughts and review on this are not completely unbiased, but I still think it's just kind of fun to get like a, a sneak peek at a bike. 
I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. I am at the top of Grand Central, which means I'm about to go down. I definitely appreciate 29 plus in a new way since trying these envies because having them having a light 29 plus wheel suddenly makes it for like 110 pound me i'm like okay now you're talking it's definitely not cheap but you know if i'm building a dream build hardtail that would be the way to go all right Corner is always sharper than I remember. I'm always curious to see what this corner is going to look like. It's a little different every time I see it. Whew. Yeah, I definitely can't rock my Ibis DV9 this hard. Partly owing to the uh, wheel and tire size, but uh, more especially because of the frame. This frame is pretty, uh, pretty gentle, pretty compliant. Whereas my DB9 is quite rigid. Even small drops on that sting a little. But uh, none of that here. I'm just having fun. And I know I've gushed about the 29 plus, but if I wanted to build this up to be light but still aggressive, I think I could still quite comfortably go down to like a 35 mil rim and just put the widest tires I could on it, maybe 2.5s or 6s, I can't remember what the limit is on that, but anyway, I still feel like that would help take a lot of the sting out, but I do feel like the uh, little bit wider tires probably is what helps roll, especially through some of the techie square edge hit climbs. But um, so many options with, you know, a frame like this, you buy it and and uh, so many options, how you could build it up and make it your own. All right, so final thoughts on this bike. I would say this bike is probably not the right bike for you necessarily if you're mostly riding kind of chill trails at a chill pace. Um, there's probably not a lot of rock or tech where you are, not a lot of steeper terrain, just something that you can pedal. Someone like that, it probably makes sense to just get a bike that you can buy as a complete bike and just kind of a grab and go kind of thing. So who is this bike for? Now, whether this is gonna be your only bike or it's going to be a prize hardtail that you build up to ride on the side, I think this is for you. If you enjoy a bike that you can take on a variety of terrain, including pushing it well into black time and territory, the body positioning is really great. The 29 plus capability, it just gives you a lot more confidence and things that you are expecting to feel painful on a hardtail, you're like, wow, that was pretty awesome. Riding hardtails can be really fun. It gives you a lot more feedback about what you're doing with your body and also what you're not doing. So if you're thinking of building up a hardtail but you want something that's not gonna hold you back a ton, if you're riding some of the fun hard trails that you like with your friends and they're still on full suspension, I think this is something that you could still um, do an enjoyable job of keeping up on. I also think Steve has done a fantastic job on the build of this bike. I would definitely recommend that MicroShift Advent X drivetrain. Um, the brakes are awesome and awesomely powerful. They're way more powerful than a 110 pound rider like me needs, but definitely fun. Um, but I would say if I was building up this bike, I don't know if that's where I would put my money is in those boutique brakes. I would probably put some of that money um, 
toward getting a nice wheel set like the NVs that are on this. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. I will include lots of helpful links for you guys and info about this bike in the description. I can't wait to hear from you guys in the comments about this bike. If you've enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider doing something to support my channel. A lot of the things you can do don't cost you a penny. All you gotta do is like this video, leave a comment, subscribe. All those things help my channel out and help other people find my videos as well. I also have a partner link from competitivecyclist.com and they have pretty much everything you need for your cycling needs over there. Using that link helps support my channel. You can also use my Club Ride Apparel link. That will get you 20% off and you can find both of those in the description. Thank you so much for watching you guys. I'll see you next time. Get dusty.